In 1966, there was a boy named Richard Montanez. He came from a poor Mexican family who worked in a winery with a drunkard as a father. As a minority, he was prone to bullying. The bullies tend to disturb his lunch during recess and wasted his burrito only because it had peas inside which they said was food for the poor, but despite that, he didn't feel bad about it. He even went to the school the very next day bringing more that he gave to the girl he liked. He also had one of the bullies try the burrito he brought and made him fall in love with the taste. When the other bullies wanted a bite, he made him pay 25 cents for each burrito. Since then, he became a successful burrito seller at school and got a lot of orders. The money Richard collected was finally enough for him to buy chocolate for his desired girl. He then went to the convenience store, intending to buy the chocolate, only to get himself arrested after attracting too much attention for bringing a lot of money with him. During the 60s, the Mexicans were still considered low class and tended to get the wrong judgment. Richard was treated like a criminal by the local police and was arrested. Since then, after a lot of criminal-like treatment he got, he ended up becoming one of them. During the 70s, Richard had grown into a teenager and was familiar with wrong judgment and bad treatment from the police. With long hair and a mustache, Richard became a part of gangsters and drug dealers. He and his girl from elementary school, Judy, who became his girlfriend, seemed to be together always. One day, their relationship went too far and Judy ended up pregnant. Since then, as if he was struck by lightning, Richard had a realization of what he had done this whole time. He realized that he had done wrong and as time passing, he began to keep his distance from his drug dealer friends. In 1982, Richard and Judy finally married and had two children. Richard worked as an electrician who barely met the end of the month. In the end, this family had to rely on Judy's salary working as a shopkeeper, which was still not enough to support the lives of two children and they barely meet the end of the month. While Richard was still looking for a better job, Judy worked as a seller on the street. Felt he needed help to provide for his family, Richard finally returned to his parents' house, where in fact he didn't seem too fond to meet his father. It was shown when he finally met them, he was treated badly by his father. He then went out to meet old friends. Richard wanted to return to selling drugs, but it turned out that Tony Romero, the gang leader, forbade him to return to the streets because he felt sorry for his family. It turned out that Tony was already finished with his dark past too and now worked in a food factory. Knowing that Tony worked in a factory, Richard asked him to find him a position in the company too. Tony then told him to bring his application to his workplace. The next day, Richard came to the food factory which turned out to be Frito-Lay, a food industry that produced snacks like Cheetos, Lay's, and Doritos. Fortunately, Richard wasn't immediately refused but was told to fill out the application form that had been prepared by the company. Felt confused and not confident to fill out the form, he went home to fill it out later. At home, Judy was the one who in the end filled out the form. Judy filled out the alumni column as a graduate of Santo Bernardo's high school, even though Richard never by the time reached high school. Judy was sure that the people in the company would not know that. The next day, with the form filled in by Judy, Richard immediately faced the human and resource manager, who turned out to be a high school alumnus of Santo Bernardo's high school itself. Richard, who was not a good liar, finally spilled the bean and got the lies exposed, but when the manager was about to leave, Richard asked for an opportunity to work there. Seeing that there was little to no risk of a janitor position, in the end, the manager accepted Richard to work, knowing that Mexican laborers were hard workers. With enthusiasm, the very next day, Richard ironed the Frito-Lay work uniform that had been given to him by the company. As an immigrant like him, being able to work in big companies had become a matter of pride even though it was just as a janitor. He was then taken around the factory where he looked at a sea of chips produced and packed. He was enthusiastic to see the amazing facility, especially because he is very interested in machinery. He worked diligently and never forgot to check out the machines in the factory, which he saw were so up-to-date and modern. One time, he asked about it to a machine operator who instead told him to just do his job. He was about to get mad but he held his anger, knowing he needed the job and wouldn't want to cause any trouble that could endanger his career. One time, when Richard was cleaning, he met an operator whose name is Clarence Baker. He immediately showed his interest in the machinery to Clarence, but thankfully, Clarence respected Richard. Clarence said that he knew about machinery from self-taught learning, Richard got more enthusiasm to keep asking questions, but when the moment was still going on, Tony then came and stopped the conversation. He then apologized to Clarence for the presumptuous behavior of his friend. In the cafeteria, 
Tawny gave an explanation to Richard that low-level employees like them shouldn't just talk to high-class employees if they wanted their position secure, and about Clarence, he was the best machine operator in the company, the most senior of all, but up to 15 years of career, he never got promoted as a plan manager, possibly because of racial problems. Hearing this, Richard was even more intent on studying with Clarence. Although he was grateful for his job as a janitor, he didn't intend to work as a janitor for the rest of his life and had a high dream of becoming successful like Roger Enrico, the CEO of Pepsi Company who at that time managed and rivaling Coca-Cola. It so happened that the Frito-Lay Company was still under the Pepsi Company holding company. Richard then bribed Clarence with special Mexican food to get closer to him. Clarence seemed to understand Richard's intention who one day wanted to get a better position, so he began to take him as a student. Every day, while cleaning, Richard never forgot to ask about mechanics and Clarence would always give answers. These two people were getting closer and closer, and because of his enthusiasm for learning, Richard was willing to come early and go home late to get additional tutoring from Clarence. His diligence paid off as he was awarded the Employee of the Month. It turned out that life was not as smooth as expected, because when Ronald Reagan became the President of the United States, the economic recession hit the country, and instead of being promoted, Richard had to be grateful that he was still able to survive when Frito-Lay had to downsize the number of employees. During the eight-year period until 1992, Richard had to be satisfied with his job as a janitor as much as possible since the lower-class Mexican immigrant employees must be able to enjoy what they had, even though their working hours were increasingly limited. Due to a shortage of employees, Richard voluntarily helped with the work of other divisions. One day, while participating in distributing goods, he saw that buyers of their products were only white people with only limited flavors of the products. The company situation that year was getting worse because sales were decreasing due to the recession, coupled with the competition with the emergence of new products from competing companies. Roger Enrico was so stressed, he panicked and made a motivational video that he gave to each branch company to show to all employees. In the video, Roger Enrico asked his employees to be patient and motivate them to think like a CEO and gave input to the company. At the Rancho Cucamonga Frito-Lay branch plant, only Richard watched the video. Roger Enrico's words were very evocative for Richard. The sentence that stated to find opportunities behind adversity. That afternoon, Richard picked up his sons from school. He was shocked when he saw that one of his sons was battered. Turned out, he had a fight with his friend after being called a Latino, while the younger one didn't even care. He was proud to have Mexican blood because he loved Mexican food made by his mother, like taco, burrito, carnasada, and others. To cheer up his son, Richard then invited them to snack on a loat, a Mexican-style grilled corn covered in spicy seasoning. The kid actually liked it spicy. That very moment, Richard just realized that as Latinos, they really like spicy food. The load had given him inspiration. When he came home, Richard had come up with an idea that left Judy in question. He intended to make a sample. A spicy seasoned snack that would undoubtedly be able to save his company as well as his job. He then asked his wife to concoct the seasonings. The next day in the factory, Richard conveyed his idea to Clarence. He was sure that the product he made would sell in the market and eventually save the company. He didn't ask Clarence to tell Roger and Rico. He only asked permission to bring home some raw products for him to mix at his house. He wanted to make a sample and later, asked everyone to taste it right away. To make an authentic taste, Richard and Judy went shopping for spices at an authentic Mexican shop, they bought all kinds of spices to be used as experimental material. Richard often had to go back and forth to buy the spices ordered by Judy. When they were finished, they ordered Stephen, their youngest son, as a tester. The research to make this spicy taste actually had been done by the Frito-Lay research and development team, but what they concocted were chemicals, a kind of essence. They didn't mix up that delicious flavor with real spices as Richard and Judy did. Richard and Judy did the experiment repeatedly until finally, they discovered the perfect combination that made Stephen addicted to the flavor. One day, their factory was doing another layoff of employees. Richard felt that it was time for him to act. He dared to convey his idea to Lonnie, the plan manager, and asked him to call Roger and Rico. Lonnie directly refused, saying there would be no chance for a CEO to hear the idea from a janitor like him. He was annoyed because he felt taken for granted. Finally, Richard acted alone. That night, when the others were on their way home, he snuck into the manager's office and copied the phone number of their company's CEO, and the next day, he secretly called the CEO's office. The staff was shocked to find out a low-class worker called straight to the CEO's office, but knowing the situation of the company, after knowing Richard's intention, the staff immediately forwarded the call to Roger and Rico. 
While talking to the CEO, Richard explained to the point, saying that he is a Mexican, and like other Mexicans, they really like to eat snacks, but they always smear it with spicy sauce, explaining that the Mexicans love spicy foods. He then said that he had made his own seasoning that could be sprinkled on their products. When Roger found out that Richard was motivated by watching his video, Roger became interested in Richard's idea and decided to try his samples, and when he finally received the sample, despite the extreme spiciness, the taste was actually addicting. Long story short, Roger called Richard and said that he was very intrigued by his initiative. In the next two weeks, Roger would visit the Frito-Lay plant in Rancho Cucamonga. He hoped to hear more ideas from Richard. The arrival of the big boss to listen to ideas from a low-class employee immediately caused an uproar among the officials at the Frito-Lay factory. At his own work location, even the manager scolded him for violating the command hierarchy. It was not appropriate for Richard to speak directly to the CEO straight away, especially about the new flavor ideas, because it could cost research and development and has the potential to cause some employees to experience layoffs again if the company continued to indulge in funds to support Richard's spicy taste. Finally, Richard became restless. He was afraid that he would be held responsible if there is another dismissal at his company. He even intended to stop the CEO from coming to their factory, but fortunately, he has the wife of Judy who always makes sure that he is not giving up easily. Judy gave the view that the plan manager's reaction was just an expression of sheer arrogance. They were afraid of losing their reputation because of the smart vision of their subordinate workers, and instead of thinking about unimportant stuff, Judy invited his husband to practice his presentation. The two of them were then busy digging into the library, looking for references to do business presentations properly and correctly. Apart from the way his wife taught him, Richard also learned how to speak formally from Clarence to help with his presentation later. Meanwhile, Judy also prepared his husband's appearance so that he would look a little more educated and elegant. The presentation day arrived. Meanwhile, Richard was still trying to memorize the cheat sheet that he brought. Roger and Rico finally arrived at the factory with some other officials. Their coming was very intimidating. Armed with a presentation sheet on a projector, Richard wanted to convince the officials with his presentation. He couldn't stand his Harvard graduate-like composure and decided to present his presentation as comfortably as he wanted to. Richard appeared frankly and openly said that from the point of view of a Latino consumer, he said that their product list was too boring. As a Latino who was used to food full of spices, he longed for snacks that are rich in flavor. He wanted to open the eyes of the officials that so far, the Latino market was actually very large in America, but they still hadn't looked at it. He didn't care about the ridicule of an executive who belittled him because he didn't understand the marketing term. He just wanted to represent the Latino who wanted his taste to be represented in a product. All that was enough for Roger and Rico to be able to see the vision of Richard. Indeed, Richard didn't understand the term market trend, but he was very people-oriented and it is in the people factor that Roger and Rico used to invest. He decided to provide an opportunity for ideas from the janitor. The company then decided to do a market test of 5,000 packs of new variants on the market. This new variant of Cheetos is named Flaming Hot Cheetos. Sadly, after quite some time on display on supermarket shelves, it turned out that this new variant had not been touched by consumers. James Finley, the executive of the company, decided to stop the experiment. Of course, Richard and Lonnie, as representatives of the branch factory protested. Lonnie asked to give him another chance until the next one week. To be at this critical point, Richard started doubting himself and thought that it was true for a janitor not to deal with such a critical decision on the company. Luckily, good people like Richard had a lot of supportive friends who kept supporting him. Clarence then gave him the support he needed, asking him to swallow his pride and continue to never give up. At home, Richard thought of a way out to overcome this problem, again from his son. He got inspiration. His son said that he never saw any advertisement for the Flaming Hot Cheetos, so the next day, Richard visited Tony in his old gang's place. He promised to give Tony's old job back as long as he wanted to help him. Then, accompanied by Tony and the gang, Richard came to the factory. He climbed onto one of the machines and then gave a speech. He told all the workers that the Flaming Hot Cheetos made by their branch would soon be stopped by the company. For that, Richard wanted to ask for help from everyone. He firmly believed that the sluggish sales of the Flaming Hot Cheetos were because people didn't know about it. For this reason, he wanted to do marketing by spreading the piles of Flaming Hot Cheetos in their warehouses to the Latinos community, their target market, and with the help of all the employees, they transported the cardboard boxes to Tony and the others' cars. The goods were taken to the residential location of the Latinos community, in the hope that they would get them interested in the new Flaming Hot Cheetos. 
Apart from that, Richard and his sons also went to the supermarket to buy their products, making visitors curious about the flaming hot Cheetos. This action then had an effect by increasing the sales chart for the product. After the good news, Roger Enrico was enthusiastic. He then contacted Richard and ordered a mega production of flaming hot Cheetos for 5 million packs to be produced immediately by the Rancho Cucamonga branch factory. This was good news for Richard and the employees of the factory branch. Production was immediately done to oversee this massive production, and thanks to the massive production, the previous layoffs laborers were hired back, including Tony. The flaming hot Cheetos finally hit the market again. After six months, the condition of the company was stable and even able to return to normal as before the recession, thanks to the flaming hot Cheetos. Clarence was finally promoted as the new plan manager after waiting for 20 years, but sadly for Richard, who hoped to be promoted as the machine operator, apparently still had not received the good news, but turned out, that very day, Roger Enrico himself secretly visited the branch. He then met with Richard and surprised him with a promotion, not just a machine operator position, Roger promoted Richard to become the director of cross-cultural marketing. Roger wanted him to develop more new variants of Cheetos flavors based on the local taste. All employees really appreciate Richard's contribution to the company, Judy was surprised to hear the news that her husband had immediately been promoted to director. Since then, Richard continued to work and came up with other innovations that brought Frito-Lay products to gain more and more interest from the snackers. He was nicknamed the godfather of Latino marketing among top executives of Pepsi Company. Frito-Lay and later retired in 2019 by leaving the legacy of the flaming hot Cheetos.